Thomas, um, as you're probably aware, um, Councillor Hanratty, who normally chairs this meeting, has had to give his apologies. So, um, could I ask for a nomination to chair this meeting, please? Can I move that there? Do we have any please to second that? Thank you. Before we start recording, um, welcome everybody. Um, why there's been a little bit of a change around today is because there's a, a, a parliamentary select committee on the bill, the police bill, and we were asked to go and, with the other metropolitan authorities, to give evidence before that committee. The Councillor Hanratty, who would normally be chairing this, has gone down to London. We asked some of our other colleagues to try and make up the numbers. Um, and uh, just the way it's turned out, actually. That's the way it is. Um, before we uh, start the meeting, there's no fire alarm plans, no smoking, toilets down the corridor. If you want to leave the meeting, let us know. Uh, we need to turn off recording equipment at that stage. Does anybody have any objection to being recorded, filmed? If not, okay. Um, mobile phones turned off, please. So I'm Councillor Leslie Byram. I'm going to chair this meeting. Um, Councillor Barron, can I just um, advise that um, the um, Police and Crime Commissioner is on her way, okay. is not here, um, whether you want to adjourn the start of the meeting to uh, wait for her arrival or not is obviously yours and the committee's decision. Uh, yes, well we'll just hang on for a few moments and uh, see if she's on her way, Rip, ripping into the car park now. She doesn't get drunk for speeding. <laughs> <laughs> that would be strangely ironic, wouldn't it? Yes. Thankfully for not in North Wales. So, I mean, whilst we just slowly move uh, forward, um, we've got some preliminary matters. Um, are there any apologies? We've got apologies from Councillor uh, Mavratti. Sir John Murphy, uh, represented by Deputy Chief Constable Andy Cook. Are there any declarations of interest in today's meeting? No. No. There's no items of urgency. So uh, we'll just hold on a few, few more minutes and then we can make a, a bit of a gentle start on the meeting. Has everybody got the papers? <coughs> Just coming up to item one. Welcome, Joe. We uh, we just to say, being through preliminary matters, just coming up to item one. Or yeah, item one. Really. Um, maybe some previous meetings. Um, that's how that is down in London. Okay, so if we go to, we have one actually, we move to two minutes of the previous meeting, pages five to eight. Any changes, alterations to that? Otherwise, can they be accepted as a true record? Agreed. Thank you. Uh, item three, enabling closer work <coughs> between the emergency services, page nine to 16. Thanks, Chair. The purpose of this report, members, is to update the committee on the government's response to the consultation on enabling closer working between the emergency services. The committee will be aware of the government's manifesto commitment to enable fire and police services to work more closely together and to develop the role of elected police crime commissioners. On 11th of September last year, 
Home Office, DCLG and the Department for Health jointly launched a public consultation which sought views on how to implement changes to legislation to enable greater collaboration between the emergency services. I just need to make the point, members, that the questions within that consultation were very much framed around how to make the changes rather than if the changes should be made. The consultation ran for six weeks and received over 300 responses. The committee considered the authority response at the last meeting, which was on the 19th of October, and the Police Crime Commissioner also submitted a response prior to the consultation closing on the 23rd of October. On the 19th of December, Theresa May, who is the Home Secretary, announced a machinery and governance change which moved the Fire and Rescue Service from DCLG into the Home Office. And this move was confirmed on the 6th of January by Mike Penning. The response to enabling closer working between the emergency services was published on the 26th of January and set out a range of proposals which are listed within the bullet points at paragraph 6 on page 10 of your report. We just summarise those briefly. That's to introduce a high level duty to collaborate across the three emergency services, to enable police crime commissioners to take on governance of the local fire and rescue authority where the local case is made, which is referred to as the governance model where the PCC takes on responsibility for the Fire and Rescue Service, uh, Fire and Rescue Authority rather, enable him or her to create a single employer for police and fire staff, which would facilitate the sharing of support functions and streamline management, which is referred to as the single employer model, or enable police crime commissioners to be represented on Fire and Rescue Authorities with the agreement of the Fire and Rescue Authority in areas where the authority has remained in place. There was another element to the, uh, the, the consultation which doesn't directly relate to Merseyside, albeit the, I suppose, the broad principle in the context of devolution does, which is to abolish the London Fire and Emergency Planning Authority and uh, ostensibly uh, designate the London Fire Commissioner uh, position as corporation sole, which is the same as that uh, in legal terms for a chief constable. The proposal to set out more detail of paragraphs 10 to 22 on pages 10 to 12 of your report. Now, I can briefly summarise each proposal if, uh, if the committee would, if you want me to, but I think pretty much I've just covered that off in, the, uh, in speaking to the summary there on the, uh, on the list. But I, I'm, I'll be guided by yourselves if you need me to speak in any more detail. I think we can tell, because the contents of the Thanks, Chair. There is an additional consideration for the authority and the Police Crime Commission which arises from the Cities and Local Government Devolution Act and the creation of the City Region Mayor who could take on the responsibilities currently discharged by the Fire Rescue Authority and the Police Crime Commission, as will be the case within London and Greater Manchester. Now, that's not a straightforward undertaking within the, uh, the Liverpool City region, however, owing to the fact that Halton, which is the, the sixth authority within the, uh, the combined authority, is covered by Cheshire Fire and Rescue Authority and the Cheshire uh, Police Crime Commission, therefore would need to be subsumed within the Merseyside for that to happen. We have uh, both the Fire and Rescue Authority and the PCC have offered views to the Liverpool City region over the various governance options, so I won't speak any further to that at this point because you, you're all aware of that and that's something that we've covered in the, in the past. The equality and diversity, staff, legal, financial and risk management implications are listed within the report of paragraphs 24 to 29, which are on pages 12 to 13. If I can bring members back to the recommendations of the report, which are listed at paragraph 2 on page 9, what we're asking the committee to consider is that you note the Police and Crime Bill and the government's response to the national consultation on enabling closer working between the emergency services, that you consider what impact the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority may have on planning for our collaborative activity and indeed governance arrangements. 
And what we're asking you to do is to agree that following this meeting, you will consider your respective positions and advise officers what they are in order then to give us direction on how we proceed around the uh, collaboration work that we're undertaking. Uh, I'll pause at that point, Chair. Can I invite the Deputy Chief Constable if, uh, to see if he wishes to add any comment? Things which are of a decision making nature, and there's nothing very much here of a decision making nature, need to be held in public. We are limited, and I look to the solicitor to advise us here, we are limited on what categories of, of discussion that we can hold in camera. Uh, yeah, if it's, if it's helpful, it's um, something boring called Schedule 12 A to Local Government Act. 1972 and it lists certain categories that would be exempt from press and public um, information. Um, and I, I normally have to advise before the meeting about whether something would right. fall into that bracket, and nobody's asked me to advise about that. I, I, I can't see it's on the face of it how it, I it, it's it. difficult. Yeah. What we could do is we could have a, a rudimentary discussion here, and once the meeting is closed, because these are things that would not be of a, of a decision-making nature, we can certainly talk about them right. after the close of the meeting. Right. One of the problems that we face with this particular agenda is we didn't have sight of it until Friday. Um, so it's given us very short notice to consider what's on the agenda. Um, I, if I had seen the report in advance before its publication, I would have made recommendations around amending the agenda and perhaps explaining why. I think some of this could be more usefully discussed uh, elsewhere. However, um, I mean, I'm perfectly content to say what I think would, needs to be said now in public. I've, it's just I felt we could make uh, perhaps more progress if we were able to discuss it elsewhere, but uh, we've got the agenda table as it is. For future reference, can I make two suggestions? One is that uh, Joe Liddy should join the Strategic Management Group this discussion because what I think is being missed is that the OPCC is a completely separate legal entity to the police force and although uh, Joe will not have the expertise around operational collaborations she's got huge experience and expertise around governance and other collaborations other areas um, which would be of benefit to that group so can I propose that going <coughs> forward that would also mean that the OPCC gets doubly copied into. I know the force are, are, are involved, but it would just improve that communications. Um, so if you want to proceed and consider item three now, I'm perfectly happy to do that. And we can fill you in on what the Home Secretary's recently said. It's, we change their mind every, every week. Just to um, clarify the, uh, the recommendation for the benefits of uh, all, all members of the committee. I believe it's not the intention of, uh, of officers, certainly, that we, we had any sort of debate or discussion here at this point. What we're, the recommendation is asking for is that following this meeting and the presentations that we, uh, we intend to deliver for items four and five, that you consider the, uh, the issues that are raised and then 
commit to your positions following the yeah. meeting to give us directions to where we want to go after that. I mean, this is this is where I think it, this is it isn't right to be asking us to do this at this point, Chair, because in, in reality, in six weeks there will be an election. All of us who are elected around this table may or may not be affected by that. You may have a completely different PCC uh, who will want to be come fully briefed and, and up to date on what this work involves and may take a completely different position. So I, I, I think we should not consider this at this moment because I certainly won't be in a position to give you my views. I would want to wait to see what the electorate of Merseyside decided before I, I gave you my views on it. It's just making progress at this stage, so okay. just moving forward. And I think your suggestion, uh, to Joanne, it makes a, you know, uh, that's the operational board and makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. There's one further suggestion I'd like to make. You, there's a um, consultant um, that's going to be uh, invited to, to look at some of the areas of, of collaboration between the force and the police. Bear in mind the whole objective of this work is to try to release resources to the front line of both policing and fire, in particular given the pushing budget challenges that the fire service is facing. I suggest, and I haven't had a chance to discuss it in the past, which um, um, it's just I'm putting it out there. I think we should be asking the consultant to look at all of the options in this, even the ones that we we don't think we would even consider in a month of Sundays, and give us a cost-benefit analysis of the different governance options, as well as the other work that they're doing on on the operational collaboration and corporate collaboration. What do you think? I mean, if there's pieces of work, there's a piece of work going on, and we can benefit from that and feed into that. that makes sense again, doesn't it? Really? I mean, we've from from our side, if you like, from the fire, we've had a very busy since we last met in a very busy period and you are right that you're going that way and then you're going that way and you're going back that way. We've we had the meeting with the combined authority, we both gave separate briefings to the combined authority, it's more about projects. Uh, but I think the mood music was there and also a a request from the chairman to have another meeting to exactly from this deliberation to feed into the combined authority and let the combined authority give us their views as well. And I think that's an important thing on the horizon, actually. Yes. But you are probably right, dependent upon the upcoming election. Yes. You know, it probably is something for, for after. But it's up to the combined authority to make that. So we had the opportunity to brief Andy Burnham. We've had a meeting with, you know, we, had, we were at a conference with uh, Mike Penny, the minister. Um, it, well, actually, it was there, was there was a lot there. Actually, it was quite quite interesting, uh, and his his overall attitude to it, the um, uh, opposition uh, front bench folks with the fire also gave her views. We've had opportunity to listen to many of the other metropolitan, particularly fire authority uh, chiefs and chairs and so forth. So there's a lot of work gone in over the past few months in terms of trying to understand where we are, what the geography is of the task ahead, and, and where, who's our friends and who's sniping at us. Um, the change, the big change for us obviously was that we, probably since our last meeting, we moved into the, you know, the home office and it's not until the 1st of April that the budget moves across. So we're starting to have meetings with the, you know, the top civil servants there, again having an understanding of the change for us, the change of um, culture, and perhaps change of emphasis as well. You know, we've been making the case for, you know, we need to have some sort of <coughs> risk assessed approach to some of the changes that have been put upon us. DCLG was such a big department, and the Home Office is quite different. And, you know, we used to be at the Home Office, come back full circle, I know, 10, 12 years ago. <coughs> so I think this. Document which is, um, I would say this was a, um, a paving uh, interim document. Uh, it, it, the, a is to note, and it's 
noting a continually changing, and indeed, Councillor uh, Hanratty, we got the opportunity to make a presentation to give evidence to the Select Committee uh, on the Police and Crime Bill, and that you know the timetable short. That's today, and it's, it was every Tuesday and Thursday going on. So there's there's a group of metropolitan chairs down giving presentations, and others, the FBU and various others, are giving uh, evidence uh, over the next period. And so what we see as the bill will change into the act, and we don't know what's going to be there. Some of the stuff that we're looking at won't be there. <coughs> so there's no point making decisions on that, because you just have to see what emerges. Um, B, consider what impact we're looking at the city region. I think we need to have that piece of work being prepared for if the city region, which will, after the elections, emerge into a, uh, a more formal uh, structure and there will be an interim mayor and those sorts of things, they will have to get their own machinery into gear and that will take them some time. But, and they won't have us at the very, the two of us, at the very front of the uh, line set. But so for B, uh, that will be again a piece of work. And if they invite us to give evidence or to come in and talk to them, that's when we need to have had our, you know, talking from the same hymn sheet and, and have our own case prepared. C, um, is that um, preparing uh, the case? And I think if your officers or the, the officer group can be expanded on the working group, it's, that's a great thing, that's a good idea. Um, so I don't think that other than agreeing that more work needs to be done, that we need to make a more detailed decisions. However, if there's information, you know, sort of update that you want to share with us, that, that would be helpful as well. There's a, chair, yes. um, there's a speech that the Home Secretary gave in the last week that would imply that uh, she may come back with amendments to the bill that would transfer um, full decision making as to what direction the government takes to a PCC with the Home Secretary as final arbiter. I, I, what I think we need is if, if the consultants would be prepared to give us a cost-benefit analysis for the fire and the police service uh, of every single one of the options, not only the ones that are outlined here, but I think there are three potential outcomes from what's happening in the region and the mayoral structure that's developing. One could be no change at all. A second one could be that a full boundary change is reflected in Cheshire and the police and fire coming into Merseyside. A third option might be that Cheshire uh, fire and police remain for Runcorn and stay under the governance of Cheshire, but uh, Merseyside police and fire move under the governance and oversight of a mayor. Well, I think all three of those options are potentially possible. And I, I, I think it would be helpful to both the fire authority and, us, and ourselves to have an independent assessment of what, what the financial implications might be, transparency, um, accountability, and, and oversight. And, and if, if they can do that for us, we ought to pause on number C until we've received that independent analysis. Okay. Yeah? Uh, well, it's, that sounds like a good idea. Is this, is this consultant yours? Or is it the department's? It's something I think that, that, that is being discussed between yeah. Councillor Bad is in the No, I mean, I'll come in after just something to add because if there's nothing else to say again, I want to cover. No, the, the consultant's just a way of assisting our collaborative approach um, on for both police and fire as you move forward and various parts of the business. What the PCC is suggesting there is ostensibly what we're asking for. And so we, do, we just don't, we, just to clarify the point, I don't think we, it was never the intention we would get into an extended discussion. It's clearly not the, it, it, it would take far too long for us to do that within this forum. The, 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 
the wording may not be the best, but what we were saying was if we could have direction around the um, the direction you wish us to take, that would that would absolutely do that. Ask him to one. Which again is fine, given the uh, well, several of us. But if you, if stand all the time, but it isn't just elections themselves, but I don't think we've actually got a position yet that the government has decided upon. So, I mean, I wanted to come in on a couple of things. So I think there's some problems, specifically with the ladies, and the one thing that isn't covered, and I know Jane did do, is if we went for the uh, single employee, and I've gone through these, this kind of with local government, is when you've got two different organisations with different terms and conditions of service, uh, and you've got an HR department that's supposed to be looking. All those kind of things can have an impact, uh, and, 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 and they can have an impact on the whole thing. So what, what, what um, Jane's suggestion seems to me a, a good way forward, but that does look at the implications of each one, because what we're looking at at the moment is, is the models, but really when you, when you delve deeper, there is within every single one of them good parts, but there's some that, that, that are really... And, and what we'll have to do at the end of the day, is, I hope, is to balance them out and, and to see what we would come forward with. And, and, and if, if there's somebody who's completely isolated from everybody, you'd be looking at that, that kind of thing and come forward with, not recommendations, but that kind of balanced view. It'll help all of us to make that, that, that decision for those of us who might be left by the way. I'm, I don't have a worry, but well, the, as you said, well, there's right. So I, I'm, I support what's being said, and I think it's a good way forward. Thank you. I think, you know, at the uh, fire conference last week, we had lots of discussions about co-terminosity. Uh, counties, or mixtures of counties, with the PCCs, the several. So it's not just us. No, uh, it's the whole country. This is more complicated <laughs> for a job for the, for the Home Office and for the parliamentary drafters than it, it just is. And, you know, our situation vis-a-vis -vis Cheshire Fire and Police is just part of the overall mix, isn't it? So having some expert, you know, outside consultancy on those particular points would be very useful. And so if we get the operational group to look at the logistics of that, get that, and as an outcome of this higher level decision making to say that's what we'd like to have, uh, have some, um, you know, uh, assistance with that would be very, very useful. Um, it, it, it is a changing landscape, as, as I said before. Um, and from listening to people around the country, you have done taking your own soundings as well within PCC side, from our side. So many of those are, you know, sort of uh, talking to and, and working closely with their own PCCs. It is very, very complex. Uh, the Mets are in one position. Some Mets are not coterminous either, um, and um, you know, some want to do go one approach, some want to go another approach, and ah, uh, that's what I think. You know, Councillor Hamrat is taking the message down in London, is that we don't want a shotgun wedding. We want this to be, um, you know, an agreed across the board. And the other thing that's left out here is you know, work with the ambulance service as well. I mean, we're talking about blue light collaboration. The, the direction, and that's, I know that's the bill, it's the police and crime bill. The police and crime bill is taking fire and police together and makes little mention of the, of the ambulance. It's there, but, you know, still, that is another whole sector of blue light that we need to try and find some way of engaging with as well. Councillor Gavin. Do you, do you just want to thank Generally, what, what we do have is um, a, a devolution for all this. Um, we don't know who the new mayor will be. We, we know we're going to have uh, a regional mayor, but at the end of the day, we're going into the shadow one next year for, for, for one year, as soon as these elections are over with. Then we're 
born into the, 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 the nature of, a, of an election for, for, for a man, whoever he or she may be, you have to know their point of view. Because we could be, you know, be almost trolling down the road here quite happy thinking that they're going to be supporting a way forward. And he or she might be, because they don't know who could be, it could be an independent. It can be anybody who might know the region the mayor. So I think it is important that we can't go so far. We can have our own opinions and we can you know, come forward and think, well, I think we have to hold fire to a certain degree uh, until we get some of the, as you said, the books put on the road so we can work out together. Okay. So I think we've, uh, is there anything else to be added? Uh, we've probably covered as much as we can. We can, after the meeting's closed, we can take up informal discussion without any decision making, uh, as is the, the usual arrangement. But is there anything else to be added uh, to this uh, report before us now? If not, those decisions on page nine into A note, B consider, um, in, in that we've agreed that we will uh, look to take on some help and support with that uh, consultant, and C, um, is per our position jointly between us. Is that agreed, colleagues? Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll move on to um, item four, uh, pages 17 and 26. We like collaboration, service delivery, delivery upgrade. Uh, <coughs> Thanks, Chair. With the omission of the committee, I would uh, propose that we took items four and five together. We have John and Helen, who are in attendance, who are, have prepared a presentation for us, which would cover the substantive issues within uh, <coughs> each of the reports. And then uh, once that's concluded, Chair, uh, if I uh, come back to the recommendations, if that's acceptable. Okay, take a presentation on the two items, then we'll consider the recommendations in the Thank you. We need to turn the lights off or... Uh, <coughs> Last year, the committee agreed around the terms of reference for the Blue Light collaboration. Uh, I'm just going to explain some of the context of that work. Um, so, firstly, in developing the work, we've looked at the financial context. So, members will be aware that the um, Fire Authority had to make savings of £25.6 million pounds between um, 2011 up to 2016, and in compensatory spending review. They're looking then to make an estimated further £11 million worth of savings over the next four year period. Similarly, for Merseyside Police, um, to date, um, savings have been £77 million. And although the Comprehensive Spending Review identified that there would be no further cuts to the police budget, in reality, that isn't a bit the case. And in real terms, there'll be around a 1.3% reduction, which is an estimated £20 million over the next four years. Also within the budget from the Home Secretary for the Police, there's also some identified areas uh, where budget will be allocated where we're still awaiting some further detail. For example, the investment in the emergency services network, collaboration on specialist capabilities, so people are seen around the uplift for firearms capabilities, uh, and also funding for HMIC, College of Policing and the IPCC. Uh, and the new transformation funding, so we're still waiting to find out those details. On the political, I think we've just covered those, just around the, the uh, new issues which have come up around the Police and Crime Bill, where we're still waiting um, so for, for that to be enacted uh, and the details for that to be known. I think when we've actually looked at the collaboration, it should be emphasised that we're already aware that there's been a tremendous amount of work for collaboration between the three emergency services, because this work, whilst we've got the police and fire um, committee here, we've also looked at the aspects to the ambulance service as well. In developing any of the opportunities, we've looked to see how we can improve services for the communities, increase value for money, and also create efficiencies and uh, effectiveness. Um, just to highlight in relation to the increased demands and pressures, um, ambulance currently receives 46% <coughs> of calls for 999 and emergency calls. Fire, uh, police receive 45% and um, fire 9%. But it should be highlighted that the ambulance and police resource to demand where the fire actually um, resource to the, the risk which they are, are faced. And in developing the opportunities, what we've looked to do is to see how we can actually utilise each other's capacity 
and also how we can support each other to reduce demand or also use our services more effectively to support each other's needs. In relation to the areas that we've looked at, um, members will be aware that they agreed for us to look at um, the, the um, above um, work streams. So we've looked at operation preparedness, which covers operational planning, joint capabilities and procedures and training, community risk management, which is around our problem solving and how we can take a preventative approach um, for our communities to help to make them safer. The operational response, so within this we've looked about um, first responding to cardiac arrest, uh, NRAS triage scheme, joint operational response, which we'll cover in more detail, uh, and then looking about how we can better use our shared estate and co-location between the three services. And then the final area that we've explored is around the corporate services, which is just the fire and the police area. What we um, did for each of them as we developed the opportunities is we um, identified terms of reference and then we uh, developed opportunity assessments by working with um, practitioners from each of the agencies to identify any potential opportunities. And at this initial level, it's been the high level uh, and with members' permission, after we've done the presentation, um, for us then to look at that certain areas further to develop into an interim business case. Again, it must be highlighted at this stage, there's been really positive engagement from all the staff from each of the three emergency services, and the feedback has already happened, that it's already helped to increase um, each of the agencies' um, knowledge and experience, and already started to shape some of that working further on than what we've already um, built to. What we're now going to do is just cover the opportunities in each of those work stream areas. I'm just going to hand over to John, who's going to cover the first few for us. Thanks, yeah. I think um, just to emphasise that we've, we're only going to present the high level opportunities. We've done quite a lot more work in, <coughs> in preparing the baselines and to actually move forward to the business case. All that data is available if anybody wishes to uh, see it. But as I say, we're going to, we're going to keep it uh, high level. I think at this stage, it's probably also worth mentioning that we've identified opportunities for collaboration irrespective of what government structure we end up with we, we, we believe that these are opportunities for us to collaborate together to provide a more effective and better service for Merseyside. So in terms of operational preparedness first area we look at is operational planning just to put it into some kind of context the sorts of things we've been looking at around uh, Operational planning or events, contingency planning, the Merseyside Resilience Forum, obviously there's a lot of joined up working with uh, the MRF and our, uh, all our duty under the Civil Contingencies Act, uh, uh, risk assessments, sporting events, JESIP, etc, etc. Um, what we've done with each one, the way we're going to present the, these is, first of all, we've looked at what each area looks like. Then we've looked at the options for change. Then we've gone on to identify where there's potential benefit for one or all the organisations. And then we'll finish each area with what the potential risks and issues are. Because whilst there's obvious benefit, we've got to be cognizant of those risks and issues as well. So the options for change. We think around operational planning. Uh, eventually there's opportunity to move towards a single operational team. This will very much be a phased approach, and you can see the phases that we've identified there. I must re-emphasise again, high level opportunity, there is potential here. We've still got to put together a full business case. Um, but it will begin with co-locating our teams, looking at shared management structures, um, joint functional teams, moving on towards multi-skilled staff, staff who can perform operational planning functions on behalf of all three organisations and then obviously we can look towards further efficiencies. A phased approach like this gives us the opportunity for scalability. At each, at each uh, phase we'll be able to review where we're up to, review whether or not it's working, whether or not it is actually providing us with value for money and if and when we've decided it is then move on to the next phase. And I think that's sort of the approach that we're advocating throughout the, the, uh, the process. The benefits, we've got 
best value in achieved financial savings. It will offer greater strength and resilience. Uh, we would hope it would improve efficiency, effectiveness, shared learning, learning and understanding, um, build trust and improve communication. Embedding the JESSIC principles, and that's something that uh, I think we're all very aware of our obligation now to make sure that we fully embed JESSIC into everything we do. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll show you the rooms in there, but JESSIC is joint emergency service inter interoperability program. Um, and improve working with the Merseyside Resilience Forum again, a very important bit of what this part of all three of our organisations. There are risks and issues, dual roles of officers, a lot of our officers, particularly the uniformed officers across all three services, have an operational commitment as well and they've obviously got to honour that commitment. So by merging the teams, or potentially bringing the two teams together, we would have to make sure that we can still meet our own individual organisation's operational commitments. Um, Next four, four bullet points, vetting, ICT, different staff terms and conditions and cultures are risks and issues that we've identified across most of the work streams. So I'll mention them now, they might crop up, but we're not going to dwell on them. Suffice to say that they are obviously issues and that, that we would have to overcome if we were to move forward any, any collaborative working. So, a little bit around joint capabilities. Uh, one thing we have identified is that uh, all three organisations, our, ourselves, the fire, police and NWAS, have specialist capabilities which uh, involve teams of very highly trained very, uh, individuals with specialist skill sets. And we believe our offer, offer to our communities could be greatly enhanced by a greater understanding of each other's skill sets and a bringing together of those teams. Uh, for Merseyside Fire and Rescue, there's a, cer a search and rescue team and a marine rescue unit, both of which highly specialist, highly trained individuals. For the police, the matrix disruption team and Northwest Police underwater search and rescue teams. And there's already a lot of good examples of collaboration in these areas. For instance, the uh, Northwest Police Underwater Search and Marine Unit, I believe, covers six forces that live in the Northwest and North Wales. So obviously, there's good collaborative working around uh, the, the police, police force there. Similarly, our search and rescue team is co located at uh, Croxter with the Hazardous Area Response Team. The, both of those teams, both the Merseyside Special. Uh, search and rescue team and the heart team as it's known provide a national capability as well so they're part of national frameworks that can respond to incidents not only in Merseyside but all of, potentially all over the country has been in the, uh, been shown lately where our search and rescue team has attended two large, large building collapse incidents one in Bosley one in Didcot as we've heard recently and obviously there has been a multi-agent response to the flooding events that occurred over Christmas in the north of England. Um, and we genuinely believe that here in Merseyside we've been able to provide a better response on behalf of those national capabilities because of the collaborative work that has already been undertaken uh, with those teams. So some of the opportunities we've identified, I won't dwell on them, the things like search, working at height, methods of entry, vehicle and equipment, uh, hazmat CBRM, uh, collaborative work around our, our health facilities and disaster victim identification. Again, we've got a lot more information than this, but I'm using it highlighted for a bit more. <clears throat> so again,